let me rise and and give thanks to God our Comforter uh, and also defer all respect to our Father, Lord Jacob, and also express thanks to this holy gathering, even though it's a press engagement, because we're here on this holy site. Uh, perhaps you will agree with me that it will have to go down in your careers as a holy uh, press conference. Um, we are grateful, firstly, uh, for your indulgence. We are grateful also for your supervisors, your bosses back in the studios for their indulgence, for having allowed you to wait here as long as you did. Um, firstly, in our belief, uh, we always don't ever get tired of waiting because we know that to be in the presence of the Comforter is to be in the presence of an Anointed One uh, who in whose presence, when you're always in his presence, whatever burdens you may be carrying, you will feel that load coming off. I'm sure even that one that wanted to have a smoke has even forgotten that he needed a cigarette. Uh, so we, we hope that uh, you will feel at home. Uh, and also where we are, we are at Silo, uh, which is the headquarters of the International Pentecost Holiness Church. We are here in His Grace, the Comforter's boardroom. This is where His Grace, the Comforter, holds a conference with his priests uh, from time to time when we have uh, important ceremonies. It is here that we have those engagements uh, with the priests. His Grace, our Comforter, welcomes you. Uh, to Silo. Uh, it is only Silo because of how it derived its spiritual name Silo, because it is a place that the hand of God on the 14th September 1962 pointed that this is where the seat of the church shall be. In terms of our church, our church uh, never had a conference where people gathered to say let's create a church let's give it a name the church uh, exists because of a calling that uh, the word of god called our comforter his grace comforter frederick Modise the first today we are here during the time of his grace Comforter Frederick Mudise II. And so it is in that context that this place is called Silo. It is called Silo because it's the seat of the throne of the kingdom of God endowed upon the shoulders of His Grace, the Comfort. Most of you have been integrating, interacting with our priest, uh, Priest A.J. Wesi, who is the uh, convener team leader of the executive team, executive committee of uh, this crisis uh, council. Um, here with us in the room are also members of council. Um, immediately to my right is uh, Mr. Isaac Mativella, who is a member of council. He also comes from the youth fraternity of our kingdom. Next to him uh, is Mr. Tsepo Malhasi. He's also a member of council who's also part of the administration of the church. Next to him is Mr. Frank Macholeng, who is also a member of council and also uh, the deputy leader of the national movement uh, of our men's uh, fraternity. And then at the far end is uh, Mr. William uh, Matieng, who is also uh, a member of council and also is the uh, national leader of our men's uh, fraternity. In terms of the process we wish to follow, it is our understanding that you put to, uh, forth a request 
uh, requesting to engage with a Q&A uh, with His Grace, uh, which we will uh, request that we do in an orderly fashion. Uh, we will always ask that we take a round of questions. Those questions will be responded to and then we'll do another round of questions. Um, here and there, His Grace will also, in his own discretion, uh, sp speak on certain things that are of top of mind to him uh, as the leader, as our leader, as our spiritual father. But we humbly request that uh, you uh, work with us in a constructive manner that we don't find ourselves engaged in all sorts of controversies. Uh, this is a, a place of peace and uh, so we humbly request that we engage in that spirit of peace and mutual respect, but with due deference to His Grace, our comfort. Um, we will also speak uh, through the spokesperson of the Church on this matter, uh, Priest A.J. Wesi. Some of you call him Braevi, some of you are asking me his name is Prince Abiel uh, Wesi. Um, he, will, uh, he will speak to a few notes that he has prepared in terms of uh, how he wanted to anchor this conversation. So I would suggest we give him the opportunity to, at some point, uh, do that. Uh, he will also manage all the protocol in terms of uh, our comforter, uh, as to when we bring our comforter in and uh, when he comes in. Uh, but uh, firstly, it was to say to you welcome and to confirm the context within which you requested to have this conversation. Uh, perhaps, uh, we know you, but perhaps for the record, you may also wish to say from the gen journalistic fraternity uh, which news reporters are here from the, the media houses that are here. Uh, perhaps I can hand over to you just to say who's here from which media house, and then we can then take it from okay. there. Madam. Uh, good morning. My name is Mbali. Uh, I'm from Newsroom Africa. Good morning. Uh, my name is Manuel Tuno, and I'm from ENCA. Um, good morning. My name is Tabi Sositole. I'm from the SABC, and Newsroom Africa and ENCA are my my targets. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Warm welcome, okay. uh, Priest Wesi. If I may hand over to you then to kick us off as per your prepared script. Okay. I don't know, are you going to guide me as to how you want us to proceed or because I know we had an interview yesterday? Maybe for your statement to follow. Just give us a brief statement and then we can follow questions. A brief statement. Take it. A brief statement? A brief statement. Of what happened yesterday? Yeah, just as an action. Just a recap. Yesterday, and then we can go on with the question. Okay, so I take it exactly what happened yesterday up to, and then up to where we are now. Yeah, just what, how the comforter feels, maybe perhaps about what happened in this, what he wants to say about it. Okay, yes. as you are fully aware, our church was under siege yesterday uh, by the faction, a splinter group, from uh, our other branch in Oscar, called Jerusalem. And uh, <clears throat> uh, they came in, they forcefully wanted to take over the church. They came armed to the, fully armed, they came in, they bulldozed entrance, they used a buggy to go through and a, a gate that was locked, and uh, they managed to get access, others went through the the back gate, and they started uh, uh, harassing uh, the church members who were asleep at the time. Uh, who will take you to their respective rooms where they broke the, the windows and broke in the doors and got inside and then started assaulting them. So outside there was also shooting and uh, the police came in in a nutshell because it's just a brief overview of what happened yesterday. The police came in and then they were, they were able to arrest those outside and confiscate their guns. And then the, there was a, a, a swift operation by the uh, task team.
to go inside and to rescue people who were uh, kept hostage inside. So that is what happened. As, as you saw yesterday, there are videos of guns that were confiscated and people who were arrested. And uh, as a church, we strongly condemn what happened yesterday in the strongest possible terms. Uh, our comforter is absolutely disappointed and dismayed by what happened. And uh, we are a church. We observe religious, religious principles. We are a peaceful church. We have a history dating back from 1962. There was never an incident of this nature until now recently when this splinter group started what they are doing. The, this matter is before our, the High Court and uh, they are unable or impatient to wait for the due process of the law to unfold. They have decided to take the law into their own hands. Uh, we heard there is a succession battle, as you know, that is before court. They are part of that succession battle. Uh, it's a litigation that is before court. It, it, was, it, it, it was it first went to court on the, in, in, 19, in 2015 after the demise of the comforter, 2016. After the demise of our comforter, uh, uh, comforter Clayton Modise, and uh, they later joined as a, as a splinter group. I'm not going to delve much into how it happened unless you want to, me to brief your viewers as to how it came about. The way they came about, it was not even according to the prescript of court, because court, uh, we appeared before Judge Colapen. Perhaps it's important that I, I, I note this. We appeared before Judge Colapen, and the, the court order that was issued by Judge Colapen was that in his address he said, it is evident from the evidence that, uh, the, the, that has been led uh, on paper. Uh, because we are litigating on paper. He said, it is evident that this matter is bigger than I thought. So I would then suggest that we go for a, an oral evidence, that you, the parties should come and adduce oral evidence. And as a result, you know the oral evidence will take very long. We have been waiting, it's now four, almost five years that we have been waiting for a, a notice of set down. So we want the court, to, the matter to be heard before court like ASAP because that would bring to an end this feud of leadership that is prevalent at the moment. And that is causing all this thing, all what we are seeing happening. So the judge said, uh, because of the magnitude of this church, uh, we cannot leave it without a, an interim leadership. That's where the, the judge proposed that we, we, he be given three members from, because by then we only had two factions. That was before this, this other function came in, into being. So he said, I would prefer to have uh, three from each side, from this side and from the other side, who would form an, ex an interim executive committee to deal with the affairs of the church while we are still waiting for the court process to unfold. Because he said the magnitude of this church cannot remain without a leader. That is how the ex co of the 3-3 came into being, to jointly run the affairs of the church. In the process, uh, these people broke out and then they decided to form their own executive committee, their own council. And then they came and then they misled the congregation. I've got a letter here that states categorically that they misled, the, it is from the Majavin Corporate, who were their legal representatives at the time. Uh, because they said to the congregants, firstly they said uh, Michael Sandlana, they said, uh, before even that, they said uh, there's a video uh, and there's also an, a, a will wherein Comforter, the, the late Comforter, uh, uh, Clayton Modise, uh, appointed and prepared Michael Santana to be the leader of the church. Am I right? So, uh, then uh, the congregants persisted to say, we want to see that audio, we want to see that video, before we can agree and uh, that he is the rightful heir to the throne. 
This dragged for a long time. They were unable to adduce evidence in a form of a video or a recording, I mean, or a will. To an extent that people got frustrated, and then the leaders of the men's league, we call it Papama, the chairperson and the vice chair chairperson, took an initiative because they said Majavu Incorporate is in, in possession of that will, video and that will. So they took an initiative to approach Ma, uh, Majabu Incorporate to say, we are told that you have a video and an, an audio which tells of Man, uh, Mike Sandlana as being the, the, the rightful successor in terms of our constitution, because it is stated in our constitution the succession uh, uh, process are explicit in our constitution. Then Majavu denied that and he, he wrote this letter explaining exactly that there is no will and there has never been a video that was brought to his attention. I, I, can, I can give you this copy and you will see how you, you share it amongst yourself. It is in their letterhead from the office of, the, of Majavu's of, uh, incorporate. So despite that, they came back. When they realized that uh, uh, their lies have been exposed, they came back and said, we have an audio recording wherein they address the congregants to say, video or no video, will or no will, we are, as the ex and the council of this church, we are going to put Michael Sandana as the leader of the church. And they, they went ahead and did that. They, it, he was inaug inaug inaugurated at Jerusalem, and we were never a party to that. And we stayed here with our comforter, FLG, FLG Modise, Frederick Leonard Huizima Modise. We stayed here with him, we are still with him now. This is our headquarters. And the leader of the church, as you all know, is housed at the headquarters. So this is our position. Uh, because there's a legal battle, we have been engaging with the courts on several occasions. Uh, now recently, it was on the 25th of May, there was a judicial case management that was presided by a judge, uh, uh, the acting deputy judge, by the name of, uh, I'll, get, I'll get the name quickly. He presided over that, and uh, in that, the uh, acting deputy judge president bought a reel. Is the one who presided over over the, the latest judicial management because there have been series of judicial management in, in an endeavor to try and uh, consolidate issues and come up with time timetable as to how the, the the proceedings will go on until we have a, a set down a date in court. And in that meeting, <laughs> the following resolutions were made, not even for the first time, but they were reiterated there. And all the legal parties were represented. Our legal parties were there. Our legal representatives were there. Their legal representatives were there. The elder brother's legal representatives were there. We all presented our issues before the, ju the, the judge in that uh, judicial case management. Uh, I'm going to read what happened there. Amongst the things that were agreed at the judicial case management conference were the main matter where the comforter, FLG, and other legal representatives were possible. There was an opportunity for us to resolve this matter once and for all. The main matter is due to be heard according, so accordingly, and a, a timetable was agreed for the hearing of this matter, including the exchange of documents and witness statements this year. It was disclosed to the acting deputy judge president, uh, Potterill, that there had been violence between supporters of different parties in the past. It was agreed and appro approved by the judge, by Judge Potterill, that the parties should approach her if there are any problems. So this is six. Um, the person who made copies made one copy, the first page, or oh, back to back, sorry. 
Oh, thank you very much. All right. Yes, it was disclosed to the acting ju deputy judge, President Hotterin, that they had that they had been violence between the supporters of the different parties in the past. It was also agreed and approved by the judge that the parties should approach her, should approach the court, should there be any issue that arise pending the hearing of the main matter. Mr. Sandani was part of this process, his legal team participated in the Judicial Case Management Conference and they agreed to the process in this way until the main matter is resolved. It is shocking to us as a church and disturbing that Mr. Sandani and his supporters have chosen to go against the agreement made in front of the acting judge president and to attack the church headquarters at Silo yesterday. We are deeply saddened that these people did not approach the court if they had any dispute, but that they chose an armed attack on Silo instead, resulting in a tragic loss of life. As you are aware, we have lost five, five lives and one is critical in the hospital. So that is the current status quo. We are waiting for the court to rule over this matter. But despite that, they came and ambushed the, chair, the headquarters. This modus operandi is, is very common to them. They did this at our farm in Ganana. They did that at our farm in, uh, what is that farm, the name of that other farm? Kekanana Lincoln. Radium. Radium. In Radium and in, 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 in Gosten. They did that also in Cape Town. We have a, a mountain there that was bought by the church uh, to hold our pilgrimage there. We hold a pilgrimage every year, twice a year in, in June and in September. We dispatched a bus full of employees to go last year, June, to go and uh, prepare for the pilgrimage a week before. They, uh, when they heard that uh, our people were there preparing, they booked flights here, went to, to, to Cape Town, fully armed also, went up to the mountain, got through back doors as they are used to, and then destabilized the whole process. They attacked people, they assaulted people, grievously so. And uh, as a result of that, we lost a member who was beaten to death. So this is their modus operandi. We are not even surprised. Here at, at, at Silo, at Zirbekong, this is the third attempt to, to, to overthrow and to forcefully take over. They came here in October for the very first time. And uh, we were alerted, so we locked the gates. They came and then we informed the police the police came and then they were able to disperse them. Subsequent to that, they came again. This time, at midnight, as they did yesterday. At midnight, they came armed, they started shooting randomly, wanting to, wanting to scare people so that they can uh, gain entry. This is the third incident, like I'm saying. That one of yesterday is very regrettable because one life lost, as you know, is one life too. We have lost five. If, if we count the number of people that we lost since the leadership battle ensued, I'm counting up to nine or ten number of lives that we have lost to date. What is very disturbing to us as a church and to my, to my spiritual father, our comforter, FLG Modise, and the executive committee of the church and the church council and members, is that uh, every time we, we, we cry to our law enforcement agencies. Our cry has ended in deep ears, unfortunately. After we realize that we don't get any joy from our local police stations, we have reported several cases. I can count up to 40 cases that have been opened of assaults, GB, assault GBH, forceful entry, uh, 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 what do you call it, house breaking, you name it, trespassing, all those cases. Theft, theft. 
of, of, of properties of the church, uh, we realized that we are not getting any joy. We resolved to take this matter to the highest level of the office of the, the of SAPS. I must state categorically that despite all those efforts, our 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 plea ended and our prayers ended in deaf ears. The bus that you saw yesterday, it's one of the buses that they they took, they stole from our farm at, 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 at Ganana. That bus was red and white. Am I right? No, it was only white. It was only white. Yes. They took that bus, they came with that bus here, they fed people all the way from Jerusalem, various people, various members, to come here and, and, and do what they did yesterday. That is one of the buses that they took. Uh, it was parked there, they took it. They took tractors, brand new tractors, which were using for, 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 for plowing, at, 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 uh, for cultivation of the land and for plowing. They removed them. They amount to millions of rands. Of rands. We reported this to the police. I remember at one stage our members on the ground told us that, hey, because they were hiding there, just to observe what was happening. They called me to say, the tractors are being moved, the truck, a big truck is being moved. I called the local police. They said to me, no, our members are there, nothing is being moved. I spoke to one captain there who assured me that nothing is being moved. And at that time, the people started sh sending me videos of drivers driving those trucks out, th that truck and that bus and those tractors out uh, to Jerusalem. They followed this uh, these trucks, they will try to inform the police. Yes, he assured us that everything is under control, the captain there. He assured us everything is under control, and I personally relied on him. Only to find, indeed, later I received videos that the, 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 the things have, the, the tractors and the truck and the bus have been moved. Our guys followed these buses and the tractors. They, w they went up in, the, in, in a car, a Mercedes-Benz. They went up to Jerusalem. They took photos of those uh, properties, immovable properties, at, at Jerusalem, with the building, so that it can be clear that these are parked at Jerusalem. We took all those to the police. They did nothing about that. Instead, what even... What is even more perturbing, what disturbed me the most, is the investigating officer in that matter. Because this case was opened by a person. As you can know, I cannot go and open a case on hearsay. A person who was on the ground at the time, he opened the case. Few weeks later, the investigating officer called this guy to say, uh, I don't understand how you get involved in the Mudise things in the Mudise field because you are not a Mudise in the first place. And let me tell you, we are throwing this case of yours out of the window. The docket as we speak has been closed. It's not only this one, at more cases, there's a case, the, 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 the case in Cape Town. I'm afraid it's a murder case. I'm afraid that case will soon be turned into an inquest and not a murder case. At the, way, at, at the rate at which investigation is going there. A brigadier took that case over from a junior investigating officer. Very, very intelligent young man who was communicating with us every step of the way. He took it over from him saying, this is a very high profile case, I want to deal with it personally. Every time I call him, he appears to me like a, 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 a CD with scratches. Every time I call him, he will tell me, no, that case, we are still awaiting a post-mortem. This post-mortem was conducted by, by the state. He can walk from police station to the, 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 the mortuary where the post-mortem was conducted. But up to this date, the latest report I got from him is that they are still waiting for a post-mortem. We got fed up and we got frustrated and we approached the highest office. I spoke to the head personally of the Hawks. I spoke to General 
Bekitele. I first sent them no, uh, 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 WhatsApp messages, a detailed report of our problems. I think I still have have them with me. I'll check. I know that, that one of, of uh, Minister Tele. I lost my phone when I was attacked. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that, uh, my attack as well. I'll address that as well. But that of uh, Brigadier, of, of General, Lieutenant General, I still have it with, it with me, head of the Hawks. Because I even sent him a subsequent message after I was attacked and then after we decided to take everything now to, to, to them and ask for, for intervention from them. Uh, I remember General Kelly when I spoke to him, I said, I send you a message because I, I contacted the, his office, I spoke to his PA, and his PA gave me his, his cell number. And unfortunately, his cell number does not have the WhatsApp facility, you know, because with the WhatsApp, you can see that the person blue ticked and he read your message. So because I sent him an SMS, I made a follow-up to say, General, I send you a message, please confirm receipt thereof. And then he said, I have not received such a message. I identified myself. And then I, I assured him that I am immediately re-sending the message. I did that, and then after that, I wanted to call him to confirm that he confirmed receipt. I never got hold of him, unfortunately. We are frustrated. We had a meeting recently because the general, uh, the Lieutenant General of, of, of the Hawks uh, organized a special investigating officer that they trust in the name of Kenan Gwani. He came with a white captain. We had a meeting with him. My comforter was there. We gave him ample evidence, ample evidence that implicates uh, the, 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 the leader of that church, Michael Sandlana, and his people. Ample. And we, 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 you know, we coughed out our frustrations to him, to them. It's, it's now almost a month. We have not heard from them. When I called him, the uh, captain, Gwane, the, uh, Kenan Gwane, the last time, he said to me, no. And, and when we were in that meeting, he, he, you know, they were so impressed by what they, they got from us. And they, they assured us that, they sh they, they, you know, they, they strongly felt that it is proper that we, they, we and them organize a meeting with the general so that the general can hear this from the horse's mouth. We are more than willing. We have been waiting until today. When this incident occurred, I called him. He said, I'm sleeping. You can't call me in the middle of the night. I'm sleeping, the, 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 the kennel. You are disturbing my peace. You should report that matter to the local police station. When we told him that we have never, never, ever got service from the, the local uh, police station, he knows that. Now he's referring me to, to the same people and in the crisis that we were, we were faced with. I still want to commend the general because I also send a, uh, uh, because of his position, I felt it is not proper for me to call him, but instead I sent him a message and he responded immediately. I must commend him, the national general, the national uh, commissioner or general of the Hawks. And then he referred me to a, a, a regional, I think it's a cluster commander, Lieutenant General, Lieutenant Colonel, I've got his name also. And he was very prompt in his response. I, I called a lot of people, and as a result, we all, all called from all corners because we were frustrated. We were under, under siege, under attack. And the response yesterday was, was top class. I must commend them. But it's a reactive approach, which, according to me, it's useless. It can be prompt, but it's reactive. The reason why I, we escalated this to the highest office because it was because we want a proactive approach, a proactive approach to our problems, so that we can avert bloodshed and loss of life. I told them in my, in my messages to the general and to, to, to the minister that unless something is done, we are still going to experience a lot of bloodshed. I thought that statement was enough for them to proactively respond and to try and help come up with mechanisms, jointly so, that will help us around the table to bring this matter to an amicable end. To my dismay, until now, I'm still waiting. There was an interview, News Africa, JJ Daban, 
straight talk, is it? Is it what is the name of the Yes. There was a guy who was there, Mosa Gumbi. Go and check that file. Mosa Gumbi is a private investigator. We engaged him at one stage when we were frustrated with SAPS. We engaged Mosa Gumbi as a private investigator to ask him to help us uh, uh, resolve the problems that we had. Mosa Gumbi, when he was interviewed by JJ Taban, he mentioned IPHC. And he said, there's a pressing issue of IPHC that I brought to the attention of Minister Becky Kelly. And nothing was done. It is there in your recordings. Oh, and he promised that he's going to do something about it. He even called JJ Tabani, the minister at that time, and then JJ Tabani confirmed the minister called, and then the minister promised to, to attend to it. To date, we are still waiting. In a nutshell, okay. In a nutshell, I, I can go. I can go on days on end on uh, of our frustrations, but I think in the interest of time, because you don't have the luxury of time. That's briefly how far we went. And um, maybe we'd like to hear from Mr. Chris as well. Amen. 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 Little one assisted you racket in Molifats and Laro Nalaka and Anna Silo. Amen. A molecular motem Mokilofasala hot. Yeah, no, Helifitless or right to Mela. Retter reads the cell of fats, a cardi frustration is in the lizard. Or let a little two say. Let a little two say. Holland Hordin to a tsedi kledi fel. Kere sa tu se kilona, rata tu sa kiboma. Kahon kere ke e leo na e e e tsameka e musula e bo e bo tlogwa e bo tlogwa se chabi. Kahon ne reneli the criminals baba tlogetsing huuja. Rena <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do you have any questions that you would like to have addressed? <coughs> okay. Um, I just want to find out, have you reached out to Michael Sandrana? Because you have been saying that uh, his branch is responsible for these attacks you continue to see. Have you reached out to him? Have you asked for a meeting to sit down and try to resolve this issue? Because you continue to see the attacks on the church. You continue to see your congregation also uh, dying in some of these incidents. What have you done to sit down with him and talk this thing out? We can take uh, a series of questions. Let's take three and then we'll take uh, any further questions. But uh, I'm just wanting to have to know just that, uh, constantly reinstate the reinstate. Uh, I, I, I do know that uh, there's a leadership battle that is made. But uh, we just want to know what is the mind, where does it all start, except for the, the throne. Is this about money? Thanks, Manuela. Any other questions? 
this statement will have better follow up. Uh, thank you very much for those two questions. Um, I think that uh, what needs to be clear is that there's a very simple principle that this church, as you heard from our father, operates on. First and foremost, you must be anointed to lead this institution. The founder of this institution is Grace Comforter F.S. Melissa, was anointed by the Word of God. From that Word of God, he got the moral authority to pass on the baton to where this Word of God directs him to pass the baton to. And that spiritual baton was passed on to His Grace Comforter M.G. Mudise in 1998. His Grace Comforter M.G. Mudise publicly before this congregation on the occasion of the solemnization of the wedding of his son, who today is His Grace Comforter Frederick L.G. Mudise, whom we also refer to as Frederick II, he publicly endorsed him and said, Son, just like uh, if you go into the scriptures, David, as he passes on, says to his son Solomon, Son, I'm about to go into the way that others go. It is now up to you. The same sentiment was expressed when his grace comfort FG said to his son, Son, there's a lot to be done. It is now up to you to be a man and take matters forward so that this legacy lives on. And so this has got nothing to do from the part of this part of the kingdom, the authentic original part of the kingdom. It has nothing to do with money. Only Mr. Sandlana can explain himself. So from where we sit, the burden of proof sits with Michael Sandlana to prove his moral authority. True. He must say who, where, and how, on which date, was he given that spiritual baton to lead, to, to claim to be the leader of the International Pentecostal in this church. We have our own uh, confirmation in line with the constitution of this church where our comforter, his grace, comforter Frederick II, got his moral authority. So that, that is really the key issue. Mr. Michael Sandlana is not someone that we believe can be set and reasoned with. True. Uh, the law needs to intervene. The primary case around this institution needs to be accelerated so that courts may sit and pronounce where they need to pronounce uh, and let them hear both sides in terms of the evidence of where the moral authority lies. Uh, we believe that that is really the key issue. What has been demonstrated though, as Priest Wersi has indicated, is that on many occasions the Members led by Mr. Sandan have demonstrated that they only prefer to do things in a violent manner. We are peaceful people, and therefore we don't believe that uh, any much can be done when people want to go to war. You saw yesterday, uh, how does one come to a church armed with explosives and all those types of uh, guns to come and engage unarmed people? in a church. Uh, that is the caliber of uh, people that we're dealing with. Is this about the throne or about money? Um, the, the clear matter to us is that if you look at how this legacy was hijacked, I mean, there's a letter here which uh, Chris Wesley has explained. The letter categorically states, because the, the majority of people sitting at Oskral, at our Jerusalem uh, regional church, were led there on the basis that there was a will and a DVD. 
Whereas the attorney who was representing the church at that time categorically says there's no will, there's no DVD. And therefore, one has to conclude from there. We can't speak for Mr. Sadlan in terms of what propels him to claim the legacy of this church when, from where we sit, he doesn't have the moral authority that grants him to say, to say so. Are there any further questions or perhaps any additions? Further questions? Uh, yeah. Let's start with the uh, CDC. Uh, Tommy, so it's At uh, 2355 last night, I received a, a, a message on my phone. It is from Businda, and he's, he well, goes into detail saying that he knows the circumstances under which uh, what yesterday happened. We did give him the right of reply uh, because we did the story yesterday. The one thing that he does say, he says, the question we ask ourselves, on November the 1st, 2018, some of their congregants, were bullied by rain of bullets when they were innocently going to attend the church service at Zirvapal. So I say it seems as if it's, it is a turf war on both sides. It's he says, she says, a, kind of a sort of scenario. And the people of course in the middle are the congregants, the men and women, and the children that we saw held hostage yesterday and we saw being brought in back How does that sit with the church? Oh, you must be sure, you must be, must be right. The, the key question that Mr. Wusindala must be asked is on the 28th of October 2018, he was here. If he firstly could be asked where he was on Sabbath 28th of October 2018, he was here in an office next door here. Um, when his grace comforter Frederick II was enthroned. He must be asked as to why is it then if he believes that he is a member of good standing of the International Pentecost Holiness Church, why is it that on November 3rd he saw it fit to leave the comforter here uh, on the basis that there was a will and on the basis of that there was a DVD of uh, His Grace Comforter MG pronouncing Michael Sandler. Why did he then choose to go there when there's a letter here from the lawyers uh, who at the time very categorically said there is no such will and DVD. That's firstly the matter. So we believe that he needs to uh, express his own credibility uh, in terms of how he goes about speaking, claiming, purporting to speak for the people of the IPHC when he knows about this. And you've got, we'll, you'll be given copies, I believe, of this. Yeah. A lawyer on record, such lawyer uh, from that firm who took multitudes with him to Jerusalem, purporting that he was going to openly read. So a partner, another major of junior, that he was going to read the will. Mm. So I think really, honestly, the, the burden of credibility, the burden of proof lies with uh, Wusindala and his cohort to explain themselves in terms of from where they sit. All we ask, is that they articulate where does the leader they purport to be the leader of the IPC, where does he get his moral authority from? That's all we ask. Because the constitution of this church says the comforter is the one that passes on, the, the presiding comforter is the one that passes on the beta. We know where <coughs> the founder of the church got his beta of leadership from. We know where his successor got his baton of leadership from. We know where the grand successor, Frederick II, <coughs> got his baton of leadership from. We just wish to we could also be empowered with knowledge of where Michael Sandler got his baton of leadership from. Sister Mbali. Mbali, uh, from Newsroom Africa. I just want to know if you can just take us through the succession plan of this church. How does it work? 
Um, are you also going to begin looking at uh, uh, the succession plan in future so that we don't have uh, this sort of leadership battle which we see right now again? Firstly, let me say it is not my place uh, to speak about the succession of leadership in the church. Uh, but I'm going to err on having been given the responsibility to simply say as follows. The prerogative of succession of, of this church, let, let's start back at the beginning. 14 September 1962. The word of God came to his grace, comforter F.S. Mullis. So it needs to be known by the world that this church never had a synod or a conference where people gathered together and said, let's give the church a name. It got its name when the word that healed the founder of this church on the 14th of September 1962 said, the name of those that shall follow you shall be known as the International Pentecost Holiness Church. That's point number one. Point number two, the, the colors that you see, the official colors of this church, nobody designed them. That same word said, the people that, are f that will follow you will bear four colors, which is red, burgundy red, blue, royal blue, white, and gray. So you'll see a lot of us donned in those colors. Nobody went to a design shop and decided those. Thirdly, you will see all of us marked with the Star of David. The, the, the gold thing that's shimmering on our chest is the Star of David, the Jewish Star of David. You see it on site and so on. Nobody chose that except that word. Because it was after he was given how to pray, when he stood up, he says to us when he taught us over the years that he saw on the left something was glowing. And when he looked and asked, what is this? The word said, this is the Star of David. Take it. You are now a descendant of the kingdom of the birthright of David. Use it. Right? So that's where the moral authority starts. Then, to comply with uh, earthly secular requirements, a constitution was put in place. The constitution is very clear that the comforter, when time is right, that same word, through which you heard our comforter saying it heals, it uh, dispels lies, uh, as in the, the lies that bite people. They've got ears, they hear that word. Uh, and all sorts of things that uh, people are burdened by. That word, because isn't it that we read that God always knows the time? That word, when the right times, will instruct the comforter to know whom to prepare. Uh, Comforter FS prepared Comforter MG. And Comforter MG, before this whole congregation, prepared Comforter FLG. They worked very closely from when he was young. A lot of these uh, buildings, uh, today he's wearing a suit because you forced him to wear a suit. Mm -hmm. These buildings <coughs> here, he can tell you which brick was put on top of which brick. That's how hands on he is. Some of you may have been here when we were uh, paying our last tribute to his father. You may have seen him wearing an overall. When, if, I, if it was my father being buried, I don't think I would wear an overall on that occasion. He was wearing an overall, preparing the grave uh, and doing all sorts of things because that's how his father was. So, uh, hence we say, uh, you can't wake up one morning and just confer yourself as a successor. Uh, God has a process through which he prepares the incumbent to start preparing the successor. Perhaps in addition, uh, if you allow me, let me refer you to item 8.3 of our constitution. I'm just going to read it. I'm not going to elaborate. Item 8.3 says the comforter shall in turn be responsible for appointing his successor and shall prepare his successor spiritually, 
to perform the functions of the comfort. That is on the basis on which his answer is, is reliant. Thank you. Tell me, sir. Tell me, sir, from the SABC. Maybe if, if, if His Grace can allow us just a word to the congregants and to the church, uh, as congregants who are watching right now, a word to them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Cordin Tuatze, did the Polano, did the Fail. Amen. Kamohara Gereki and Dati. Amen. Kalebo. Amen. Are we at the conclusion? I think. Just one clarity. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to ask uh, with regards to the issue of uh, the, the congregants that are here. Yesterday we heard that there might have been 200 people that are held hostage. But I mean, in terms of the lockdown regulation, is this not breaching the lockdown regulation? Uh, thanks for that question, uh, Manova. No, it is not a, a, a breach of the regulations in that when we take you around, you'll see there's lots of houses uh, on site where, uh, so as I told you that uh, our father's inheritance, inheritance is the Star of David. So it's like a form of a kibbutz in Hebrew. Um, if you look in the Jewish faith, there's a principle of the kibbutz, which is simply translated kibbutz means to give of yourself voluntarily, or to give to God voluntarily. So people that you see on this premises are here on the principle of the kibbutz. They are here to give of themselves as volunteers to the church. So some, uh, because uh, isn't it that in all churches we give a tithe? For everything that God gives you, you tithe. So you can give tithe in twofold. You can give tithe in a material form of if you've got a herd of cattle, the 10th percentile thereof you give to God. If you've got cash, your 10th percentile you give to God. So the kibbutz, is a form of tithe where you give of yourself. It's, it's tithe of labor. And therefore they're here to give of themselves. And they rotate. They come from different branches of the country. So since lockdown, unfortunately, we've not been able to rotate. So those that have been here are here. So they come, they rotate, they get allocated housing uh, so that they can serve comfortably. Even outside of the premises next door, there's a few quarters. So they're not just all cluttered here. So they're scattered mm -hmm. surrounding the, 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 the community of Zirilko mm -hmm. because our father owns a lot of property. So social distancing is maintained in that you don't at any given time find them being uh, in large crowds. Mm -hmm. Also, we must place on record, uh, we were sitting in this very boardroom the day after His Grace was part of the religious leaders that went to meet with President Ramaphosa uh, on that occasion when the consultation happened. Because again, as we're saying, uh, this is the headquarters uh, of the IPHC. So immediately upon return, before even the president pronounced, this was on the 19th of March, we, he gathered his council here and said, we've been with the president. My read as your leader, as your spiritual father, is that there's a very difficult thing coming. There's a secular that uh, he issued on that occasion, I'll mm -hmm. even show you yes. uh, in writing. <coughs> and he showed us in the Bible that the Bible says this thing is going to be tough. 
So I am instructing that from now on we won't have services. So we stopped having services uh, on the 19th of March. In fact, on that 20th, we started turning people back at the gate because some had not already received that circular to say there will not be church services. So we've been in lockdown since, self-imposed lockdown since 19 uh, March up to today. Um, and therefore, when this thing happened yesterday, there was no church service happening. That's why they thought, because it's a quiet time, uh, there's nobody, they'll be able to get in and do as they please, but God's hand stopped them. So uh, that, that's really why there, there were there's some people on the premises. Thank you. Um, perhaps then, if we are done, in, in our culture here, you don't just finish and say goodbye. We must, uh, firstly, before uh, we even ask from uh, the God that we cannot see above us, we ask from the one that we can see whether our business is concluded. And sometimes you might also wonder why we call a human being God. Uh, I think we must uh, anticipate that question and clarify it for you and many people. Um, in two simple examples, God, the Creator, says to Moses, I'm sending you to Egypt to go and release my children from bondage. And then you know the story, I'm sure. He says, no, but that man is tough. He's not going to listen to me and so on. But he says, no. He will listen. And among the instructions God gives him, he says, he will listen to you because I'm now making you, Moses, the God of, of, of these people. So God is able to incarnate himself in a human being and work through a human being. And so to us, this is our Moses through which God's uh, anointment uh, is transferred to us. So we are going to just consult to make sure that we are graced and blessed so that you also live here blessed. Uh, and I assure you that uh, even if you go tomorrow to cover some dangerous scene, you, you're going to come out safe uh, because of this grace. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary General of the Exco. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank you, media houses that are here present today. Uh, your presence cannot go unnoticed. We are privileged, as our comforter has said, I'm just reiterating what he said in his opening statement, that uh, to us your presence is a blessing. We believe that from here the world will know, the country and the world will know what HP, HIPC stands for. Uh, I was a bit perturbed by the comments that was made by the professor <coughs> who is the chairperson of uh, LCR earlier on when I was doing a, an interview with YFM wherein he said that thing is not a church. I was very much perturbed and uh, I could not leave him to finish his statement. But I'm happy that he retracted, and uh, this is a church. I want to put it categorically. Uh, there's no hooliganism here, like the comforter has uh, alluded to. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we appreciate your presence. Thanks to the executive committee members who are here. Thanks to the Secretary General for sharing the interview. Thanks to our church leaders who are here, uh, leaders of the national executive committees who are here. Thank you very much. And above all, special thanks to our comforter for gracing this occasion, spiritually and physically so. Thank you once more. God bless you. Thanks. Shall we then rise? Yes. And take benediction. Moni bi tsona ta te mo ramo yo khana la. Amen. Bora ni mudi mo ranta ta rona ka Jesu Kriste. Mudi mo tsepega, mudi mo buitanyo. Mudi mo kileng wa re khoga. 
di tsene tse thata tsa leng yore ba re fitisa kanana le fatshela ditshepiso modimo sa swa bising modimo le rato modimo go tlola botlhoko modimo mo sa modimo a khotso ra le boganta ka ga ile re kuela go ena tshimolo go nya kopano e ra go kopanta te go rorete le pele go re bulele yone o tsene gare ga rona re fe go tlhalele tlhaloganyo ntate ka re itse gore ntle lwena ga go sepesa ka se fitella re tsama ka wena re bona ka wena re utla ka wena tse tsinga ka wena ntate re fenya ka wena le isi tla dira tsa rona re fenya tse ntate le mona go nya kgolo ya covid 19 re tsepile wena mara le modimo a rona ba ba la ntate o boloke o sireletse o phulose o bore tswa le kopano e ntate ka go tsotsa go so ka bula re kopa tsotsa o tlhe ntate o bo tsamela ba tsama re kopa tsotsa mabitso ga ba ra le bitso la go ntate mo romelo ga lla nga mela mo hao matshidi so kopano ma o boitshepo di tsamela ba tsama di sale ba sala di bitso le le go le bitso la ntate mo romelo mo ga lla nga mela Some refreshments have been arranged upstairs.